Okay, so this is section 1-4, and this section primarily is about finding the equation of a line. Um, if you recall that a linear function is of the form f at x equals mx plus b. So, now in this section, if you are given the slope and the y-intercept b, or 0 comma b, can we come up with the equation of the line? Well, we should know that by going backwards, that line is y equals mx plus b. So, for example, if you were given the slope is negative 3 and the y-intercept is 4, its equation would be y equals negative 3x plus 4. Um, if you're also given that m is 1 half, and you're given that you had the point 0 comma 2, or let's make it negative 2, we would recognize this here as being the y-intercept. So then the line would be y equals 1 half x minus 2. So again, if you're given the slope and the y-intercept of a line, you use y equals mx plus b. However, it's more common that if you're given the slope and a point the line passes through, then we can't use y equals mx plus b. So if you're given the slope and a point that the line passes through, then we need to use the formula y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals my slope. And you're going to replace the y coordinate with this, the x coordinate with this, and the slope right here, because that is our slope, the change in y's over the change in x. So, look at number 8 in section 1, 4 this is. If you were given uh, that the slope is negative 3 over 8, and the point is 0 comma 5. Well, you can recognize that as being the y-intercept because to be on the y-axis again, x has to be 0. So that line would be y equals negative 3 eighths x plus 5. It's mx plus b, so just use your mx plus b formula. Um, number 14, though, we are given that m again is negative 3 over 8 and the point the line passes through is 5, 6. So then how do we come up with the equation of the line? Well, because we're given a point and a slope, I'm going to use y minus my y coordinate, which is 6, over x minus my x coordinate, which is 5, equals my slope, negative 3 over 8. Cross multiply. So this would mean that I have 8 times y minus 6, equals negative 3 times x minus 5. Distribute 8y minus 48 equals negative 3x plus 15. Um, now solve for y by adding 48 to both sides. I can do that by sight. 48 and 15 gives me 63. And then I'll finally divide by 8. You know, whether you show it or not, it's up to you. Negative 3 over 8x plus 63 over 8. So there's my line. Uh, next, in for example number 22. In number 22, if you are given the point negative 3, 7 and the point negative 1, negative 5. So here in this one, you're not given the slope. You're given two points, but not a slope. So you need to first find the slope. So the slope is the change in y's over the change in x's. So it's 7 minus a negative 5 over a negative 3 minus a negative 1. And that ends up being 12 on top, and this becomes a positive 1. And negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and my slope is negative 6. Now I have my slope. I need to find the line. So it's y minus, I'll choose this here as my y coordinate, over x minus my x coordinate equals my slope. And this becomes a positive 5, this becomes a positive 1. You can put this over 1 and cross multiply, and you get y plus 5 equals negative 6 times x plus 1. Distribute 
and you get negative 6x minus 6. Um, subtract 5 and you get y equals negative 6x minus 11. Okay, and there's my line. Again, it's y minus the y coordinate over x minus the x coordinate equals my slope. In number 28, you're given a point and you're asked to come up with the vertical and horizontal line through that point. So in 28, if the point is negative 1 fourth comma 7, the horizontal line is y equals a constant. Well, the constant here is the y coordinate, 7, so it's y equals 7. The vertical line is x equals a constant, and the x coordinate here is negative 1 fourth. So the vertical line would be x equals negative 1 fourth. If you had the point pi comma 3, the horizontal line would be y equals 3, the y coordinate. The vertical line would be x equals pi, the x coordinate. Um, in 34, you're given information about a function, h. So you're told that h at negative 3 equals 3, and h at 0 equals 2. What is h at negative 6? Well, we got to come up with the function h satisfying these conditions. Well, remember that this is function notation for the ordered pair of negative 3, comma 3 and 0, comma 2. So to come up with the linear function, I need once again the equation of the line. Well, remember, to find the equation of a line, you need a point and a slope. You need a point and a slope. I've got two points, so I'll find the slope first. The change in y's over the change in x's. So I'll do 3 minus 2 over negative 3 minus 0, and that's 1 over negative 3 is my slope. I'll choose this as my point. It's perhaps easier. You could choose either point, by the way. It, it does not matter whether you use this point or this point. And now I'll use my formula, y minus my y coordinate over x minus my x coordinate equals my slope negative one third. It does not matter whether you shift the negative from here up to the top, um, it does not matter. Cross multiply, so I get 3y minus 6 equals negative x times 0 is just 0. Add the 6 to both sides and y equals negative one third x uh, plus 2. I'm dividing everything through by 3. So this is my linear function. So h at x equals negative 1 third x plus 2. And now I'll replace x with negative 6. And simplify. So 6 over negative 6 over 3 is negative 2. Uh, times a negative is a positive 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4. So h at negative 6 equals 4. So it's nothing more than really finding the equation of a line, calling it the linear function h, and then putting your x value in to compute the y value. So this means that when x is negative 6, y is 4. Um, next, in the next section, or the second half of this one, is about the geometry of lines. When two lines are parallel, like this, their slopes are the same. Um, so that the lines do not intersect each other, they have to have the same rate of change but different y-intercepts. So parallel lines means the lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So in, the, in number um, 36, we're asked to determine whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So these lines in 36 are given as y equals negative 3x plus 1 and y equals negative 1 third x plus 1. Well, since they're both solved for y, we know that the top one has a slope of negative 3 and the bottom one has a slope of negative 1 third. Well, they are not the same. Well, the geometry between two lines um, could be parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And these are not the same, so they're not parallel. Now, are they perpendicular? Well, lines that are perpendicular intersect to form right angles. 
and their slopes are negative reciprocals. Now what does that mean, negative reciprocals? It means that the numbers are reciprocals and they have opposite signs. So 3 halves, its negative reciprocal would be negative 2 thirds. Uh, the negative reciprocal of 1 would be negative 1. Uh, the negative reciprocal of 1 half would be negative 2. And notice that they multiply to give me negative 1. Well, these numbers are reciprocals, but they're not negative reciprocals. So these lines are neither. These would just be intersecting. Number 42 is y equals 7 minus x and y equals x plus 3. The slope of the top one is negative 1, right here. The slope of the second one is positive 1. Notice, negative 1 and 1 are negative reciprocals. They would multiply to give you negative 1. So therefore, they are perpendicular. But remember that in order to identify the slope of a line, you have to solve it for y. So if you have any pair of equations uh, that are not solved for y, and you're comparing whether they are the same slope, negative reciprocals, or neither, then you have to first solve them for y. You always have to first solve for y before you compare the slopes. Okay. Uh, next is number 46. In number 46, we're asked to do two things. We are given a point and a line. And the point we're given is negative 4, negative 5, and the line 2x plus y equals negative 4. And we're to come up with two things. We're to come up with the equation of a line passing through this point parallel to this line and perpendicular. Well, as I said again, to find the equation of a line, you need a point and a slope. You got the point. In order to find the slope, I need to solve this for y. So negative 4 minus 2x, take it over. The slope of this line is negative 2. So to be parallel to this line and passing through this, I have to ha have the same slope. So it's going to be y minus my y coordinate over x minus my x coordinate equals my slope. So this becomes y plus 5 over x plus 4 equals negative 2. Put that over 1. Cross multiply. So I get y plus 5 equals negative 2x minus 8. Subtract 5 and y equals negative 2x minus 13. That's parallel. This is the equation of the line parallel to the given one. To be perpendicular, well, I'm going to pass through the same point. So this is the same, because I'm passing through the same point. So it's still y minus my y coordinate over x minus my x coordinate. And you know, from up here, it's the same thing. But to be perpendicular, I need to take the negative reciprocal of this, which is 1 half cross multiply and get 2y plus 10 equals x plus 4. Subtract 10 and get negative 6. Uh, divide by 2 and y would be equal to 1 half x minus 3. This is the line perpendicular. Let's do one more. Um, in number 44, And number 44, we are told that we have the point negative 1, 6, and the line, or they may have used function notation, that f at x equals 2x plus 9. Okay, so to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. Well, this is solved for y already, because f at x is y. So my slope of this line is 2. So my parallel line will be y minus my y coordinate over x minus my x coordinate equals my slope of 2. Cross multiply, y minus 6 equals 2x, this becomes plus 1 then, uh, plus 2. Add 6 and y equals 2x plus 8. To be perpendicular and going through the same point, the same setup, y minus 6 
over x plus 1 equals negative 1 half. Think of the perpendicular symbol as an upside down t, and you have to reciprocate the number and take its opposite sign. Cross multiply, and you get 2y minus 12 equals negative x minus 1. Remember when you're doing this, it's 2 times y minus 6 equals a negative times x plus 1. And you have to distribute the negative through there, each becoming their opposite sign, and distributing the 2 through there, getting 2y minus 12. Add 12, get 2y equals negative x plus 11. Divide by 2, y equals negative 1 half x plus 11 halves. So this is the line perpendicular to this one and passing through that point. This is the line parallel uh, to this line passing through that point. And that concludes um, section 1-4.